Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. I'm Levi. I'm Brian. <laughs> this is our podcast about anything and everything off road. Tonight, I feel like uh, we're going to be a little all over the place. And so we typically talk about Ross is on the Northeast. I'm in the Midwest. Brian's also in the Midwest. And Levi's now in Colorado. That's correct. Okay. So we're back to three time zones, but it's not our normal three. Normally, it's East Coast, Central, and Pacific. Also, <laughs> temporarily, as you you load up and, and head west in uh, in about 16 hours. Yeah, that's true. Levi, I'm going to be in your time zone by hopefully tomorrow night. So. Sweet. Well, I'll be in the Midwest time zone by tomorrow night. <laughs> that sounds about right for the holiday <laughs> Pass travel each other. everyone. Yeah. yeah. I'll wave at you on 70. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'll be there. You see a, you see a cactus gray ranger with an alley cab. That's me. Okay. Yeah, uh, mine's a big white suburban, so I blend with everybody. <laughs> <laughs> that means that's said, why you why you have to paint the toe hooks red. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah. as uh, often as you've made fun of red toe hooks on the show, I cannot paint the toe hooks any color than black. Uh, this is a callback oh, yeah. to like a hundred episodes ago. Shit yeah. on red toe hooks. Uh, Ross, bro, bro, I every... would just do it out of spite. Just paint them red out of spite. Oh, man, just, I want to just because... go like weird. <laughs> weird colors like maybe we'll go like yellow or like you know neon. we we have this awesome bright green that we use for our our show logo that is true know. we do have that bright green color <laughs> should that, probably use that i'm definitely aware of the hex code on it too so i could definitely definitely mm-hmm. find some spray paint so um well that that leads into my update my toe hooks did arrive they arrived with so much packaging it's not even funny like uh i got them from like chevy parts online like they're, how much they do they are, weigh a lot they're like Pretty, like eight pounds each or something uh Six i think pounds. the entire package was close to eight pounds so they're like four okay. pounds each um but uh, are they just factory like yeah heavy duty tow hooks yeah they're just factory toe hooks right. that go on the front of the suburban nice. uh yeah i may i may have been hanging out with ron from Conza overland and uh watched him put his discovery through a creek bed and get stuck and have to winch out and then one of his friends in a hundred series put his hundred series in the creek bed, get stuck, and I have to winch out and went. I don't think I have a way to move the suburban if I wanted to. So right. tow hooks were were pretty quick uh order there. And then the second thing for the suburban is I've had a ridiculous noise in the front end that has been haunting me for months. Every time I take it into somebody to find figure out what it is, they're like, we can't figure out what it is. Last time I took it in to have it looked at, they're like, Did you know your sway bar is disconnected on one side? <laughs> No, um, I'm glad I had extra articulation, but um, yeah. can we can we go ahead and reattach that for me? It sounds like there there were a few people that either weren't doing their due diligence and actually looking around, or were utterly incompetent. And that in in these modern times, I it could be a little bit of both. Uh, <laughs> yeah, probably. I, I, was probably. <laughs> I scanned it for codes, but I didn't see anything. So exactly. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> literally touch all the suspension components, please. That's what I wanted you to do. Yeah. Um, so I got that fixed today. Uh in the first 10, 15 minutes, I drove it just literally from the shop back to the house. Like everything was felt great. But I'm skeptical because that's been a problem since I don't know, last March is when it developed the noise and they one shop told me, oh, your spare in the back was loose. The spare was not loose. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yes, my speaking noise of loose. Front, coming from the back. Yeah, yeah. The noise was definitely in the front. Yep. yep, um, yep but yep, speaking yep, of loose, uh, where I'm going to go to our quick news topic that Ford ran the next gen Ranger Raptor in Baja, and it looks like it went magical. Um, yeah, I mean, this is their this is their thing. This is the Ford performance thing to do with their with their, you know, Baja bread pickups. Um, this goes back to, to we said 2010 or 2011 when they ran a uh, they ran the first Raptor in Baja, pretty much threw a cage in it and like, you know, they drove it back, drove it yeah. back, you know, and and they did the yeah. same thing, uh, aluminum body F150, and I think they did the same thing with the current gen. Well, I guess like the what was it 2017 or 18 when they had the first EcoBoost. Raptor and uh and they had that whole platform with the old body on it so it looked like the old one. So this yeah. is See, you know, this is their thing. What, what bugs me is that they didn't run a Bronco Raptor. I I thought for sure Bronco Raptor would run it before the Ranger Raptor would. You so know, I did see man, 
I did see though that the Ranger Raptor got stuck at one point in a silt bed, and the rescue truck was a Bronco Raptor that went in to pull it out of the silt bed. And oh, yeah, that's and awesome. here's here's the other thing. Aside from you know this being like really good R and D for them, like the main point of this is marketing, and the Bronco Raptor is going to sell itself. You know, every every yeah. single one of those things that they build is going to go for MSRP or higher. Oh, um, dude. I- I've seen Bronco Raptors marked 45K up, and there's people flying oh, into yeah. Kansas to pick them up. Man, the shit on cars and bids and bring a trailer is like, it's crazy, you know? So I think with Ranger Raptor, there's less of a, Bang. like, the knowledge of the fact that even Ranger Raptor exists globally and that we don't have a year is, is pretty slim, you know? So with them trying to ramp up excitement for this thing. This is, this is huge marketing for them. Well, as soon as, you know, as soon as they open up the, the, I guess the ordering, you know, we don't even have a price tag on these things yet, Mm -hmm. but as soon as they, I've been, I've been toying around the idea. I will be buying either that or the new AT4X. um, Mm, Okay. As soon as they're available. Okay. Um, But one caveat, I got to, I got to look at, value cab and find out when they're going to have the the fit kit for either truck Mm -hmm. um i'm i'm guessing since the ranger now or you know the ranger is being sold you know internationally those fit kits ought to be done here pretty soon Mm -hmm. i I don't see it taking very long um but i really don't i just bought the value cab and i don't really want to spend that much money and then not be able to use it (laughs) so yeah you don't want to have to fab up your own mounting apparatus on this thing Right. And I currently have the, the 2021 Ranger trimmer, um, mm-hmm. which I can tell you, I'm pretty happy with this truck. With the trimmer? Yeah, with the Ranger trimmer. Um, it's kind of like they're they're a little bit of taste of the Raptor, you know, with the full Fox suspension mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, came with bigger tires and rear locker and, you know, a little bit, a little bit. I think it has a little better tune. If not, um, it it seems to run great and I'm on 33s and, and it, it I, I love it. I mean, did as far you, as does yours have the stickers? It does have the stickers. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> not that sticker. You mean like the big swoosh thingy on the side? Yeah. Ew, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like it. Good. Good. Yeah. Subtlety. It goes a long way. Yeah. Whenever I did go to get one of these, um, I told them I wanted a cactus gray ranger trimmer and they brought me a blue like the like the ford racing blue i can't remember what they call it like performance blue. blue yeah performance blue with those with those graphics and it was hideous <laughs> um and then they tried to charge me six hundred dollars to remove the graphics what yeah the dealership <laughs> was going to charge me six hundred bucks to, to take the graphics off i was oh like my god what? We know what these are off, the we don't take them off for you. <laughs> yeah, right. Man, yeah. That, that's that's some shit. That sounds about right, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. We already prepped it. Aren't you gonna take the damn thing? No. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't even the right color. I was like, uh, that's not cactus gray. And they were yeah, like that's uh, so do you see cactus gray is the right color. That's what you got. That's, that's what he's got. got. Okay. Yeah. It's a good looking uh, truck. Yeah. You know, and and you know, with the Raptor, the Ranger Raptor hitting the hitting the scene, I think it's gonna be it's gonna, I mean, I'm gonna say it, it's gonna blow the TRD Pro out of the water. There's that no is, doubt in my mind. It doesn't mind. take much. <laughs> well, no, you're right. It, but I not think, just the not just the TRD man. Pro, but it's gonna blow, it's gonna blow the Colorado ZR2 out of the water. It I don't know might. The, the blue... uh, man, those multimatic shocks are really good. Yeah, yeah but this they're new, really this, good. This Ranger Raptor suspension they're talking about is gonna be phenomenal. We're talking what it just ran what Baja. Yeah, it just <laughs> ran Baja, yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's gonna be it's I I mean the new Colorado that's coming out. I was I'm a Colorado fan. The new Colorado that's coming out is gonna be a peppy son of a gun too. Mm-hmm. But I don't think I don't think it's going to pair up to the Ranger Raptor with, yeah. with I mean, the suspension that's on it. Hey, how much? I mean, current F one fifty Raptor compared to current ZR two Silverado in okay. Colorado, you know, it's not even. 
Yeah. They're, it's not even the same ballpark. So. Yeah. The problem I is the price tag. I mean, you're, you're looking at, it's going to be it probably as with everything. Yeah. I'm, I'm guessing 65,000 um, for a mid-sized truck, but you know, in the current, yeah. the current Raptor, the, the most expensive or Ranger, the most expensive one is $47,000. And the current I, Ranger. That's what they're estimating. They're estimating 65 grand for the Ranger yeah, Raptor. 55, I, and 55 for the 23 Colorado ZR2. And then I think they said 60 grand for the Trail Boss edition. Yep. And that there's also like a Baja special edition kind of yep. thing. Yep. It's got some shit on it, but it's man, like as we go higher and higher with these prices and, and capability, it's just begging for you know the market just below it to even blow up more. You know, like I know there there's a an FX4 Maverick, you know, and and rumors of a Dodge coming out to compete with it and everything, but like the door is open, you know. Oh yeah. Yeah, well, and, they're, and and they're listening. They're listening to their to their customers. You know, like the Colorado ZR2. The fact that they're outboarding the shocks on the rear mm. tells me that they're listening to what people are using them to do and saying, "Hey, man, this is yep. these things are getting hung up. Like we need to figure this out." So the fact that they're doing little things like that—that that is the caveat that comes up in conversation about the current ZR2. Every single time it comes up is that the shocks sit so far in and they're just like yep. the limiting yep. factor on, on ground clearance in the back and on pretty much any, you know, rock obstacle that you go over. Yeah, that's um, a great thing. They're pushing the front axle forward. So you're going to have a better approach angle than you do on the Tacoma, mm -hmm. which that's always been Tacoma's thing is the best approach angle of any of the, the midsize trucks. So they're they're. I think it's going to be cool. I mean, you know, market. I think actually... And it's it's amazing too because I'm I could be wrong about this, but I think they're only bringing the shock the lower shock mounts outboard on the ZR2. I think on lower trim Colorados it stays. That's inwards, correct. That's correct. Which is just, which is just, really just, like just that's, the ZR2 trim levels. That is adapting for a specific use, which is I mean it's the same thing that Jeep's doing with moving the axles on the Mojave. You know, like yeah, it's we're, yeah. we're talking it about be rear. Doing. Rear, rear, shock. yeah, rear? yeah. God. The lower oh, shock mount. front yeah. mounts. Yep. No, if you just bring up a picture of the back of the Colorado ZR2, um, and it's a GM, so one sits one way, one's in one, front, you know, one's one sits in front, one sits in back, and yeah. uh, and they they sit like two thirds like of the six way. Inches. Yeah. Yeah, between the diff and the and the hub, and it's it's just. I mean, I've been on the trail with two zr2s over the last you know since it came out and both times they got hung up on those hangers so yeah and there's companies out there that do aftermarket uh shock brackets and skid plates and things like that but mm. the thing is is then you're going it, even if you move that shock mount to the center of the housing uh then you're losing all your down or you know all your up trap you're you're literally yep. gonna you have to go to a shorter shock um and now you start limiting travel because of your shock and it's just it's just a poor design and now they're fixing all that r d money just well, thrown down the toilet <laughs> you know i think i think a lot of them are starting to realize kind of what jeep and, and me and me and levi i mean we are we are jeep guys levi's probably owned 30 jeeps i've owned like 13, I'm 44. I've owned like 13 jeeps. 44 um, yeah i'm, I'm, oh I'm actually God. Last night I bought my 44th G. Man. And you know, that's the thing that that Jeep has always done. Their Rubicon package has always been the get everything that you would need to go wherever you would want to go and drive it right mm -hmm. off the factory without having to change a thing on it. Mm -hmm. And that's always been Jeep's, you know, golden glory is that Rubicon package, you know, that four to one transfer case, front rear lockers, sway bar disconnect. I mean, it did literally everything. Yep. yep. Um, and it's the total package that you can just drive off the lot and you can literally go wherever you want. In fact, it's probably more capable than most people would be comfortable with. Oh, that's not probably. That is a definite. Yeah. I mean, it is. It is. <laughs> 90% of the people would never be comfortable with what that's capable yeah. of doing. Yeah. 
Um, and I think these other these other guys and, and gals, you know, with Chevy and, and, and Ford and all them are starting to realize that people are willing to pay top dollar to drive it off mm -hmm. of the lot and have it completely built and not have to do anything yep. to Yep. Well, it's also a status symbol, you know, when you're you start seeing some people just like the uh what's that that ram um trx yeah trx, TRX. Yep. i've seen a dozen trx's i mean even in my neighborhood there's a trx and i guarantee that thing will never go off the road they pay ninety six thousand dollars for that truck mm -hmm. and it's it's a street yep. queen i mean that's they bought it because oh, yeah. it looks cool and it has I mean, that you know but, in the northeast it's the trx is effectively unusable on the trail oh yeah 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 same, you know we go, to, we, the, go to we go to arkansas a lot man we would never be able to take a trx on anything mm -hmm. that we that we go and do yep. i mean well, even in the pacific northwest we i mean Brian you're absolutely right, right. Before, we were stationed at uh at port lewis in, in washington and we were in our jeeps and there the, the trails were tight in jeeps back then you know what i mean mm -hmm. and Yep. And, yep. and hard you, somebody if whoever thinks washington state doesn't have very good trails man those things are tough trails <laughs> um but you would never i mean it's dirt road like 90 miles an hour that's about all you could do the only thing the trx or the only area the trx is good for is a desert yep they know yeah. that they're not hiding that fact no you know and but the it's that it's like pushing the envelope though every company is doing it Look at Rams, uh, the power wagon when they first came out. What was that like back in 08, maybe? Like, hey, it was, the, I guess the second gen power wagon. They used to have. But, you know, that was the first truck with front and rear lockers and electronic sway disconnects ever. And a factory winch. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, those things are still cool. And they made it in a single cab too, which is yeah. like, oh, good luck finding one of those. In his single no, cab, no. Uh, 2005, the first DH body power wagon. Yep. And they have, 2005? Uh, 2005, yeah. Yep. You know, they brought Crazy. the Rubicon in in 2003. And in 2005, they, they, they yep. started doing the, the power wagon. And they led the charge when it comes to off-road capability from the factory. Mm -hmm. I mean, D9 Discovery, maybe, like Land Rover. Um, had some pretty good and, and Toyota with their Land Cruisers. Um, but as far as affordability, that was, and, and availability, I should say, you could go out and spend $80,000 on a Land Cruiser back then and mm -hmm. have front and rear lockers. And, but, you know, that was 80, 80 grand. Right. When I can go and buy a, an 03, I can go out and buy an $18,000 TJ and go straight to <laughs> Moab with it and, and literally wheel Pritchett Canyon true which i was just at the entrance to that this last summer <laughs> i did not go up it because i had an adventure van with me and i was just uh, watching yesterday those crazy guys from randy's transmission take that that oh, long wheelbase dually long wheel base. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man that was that's sick kooky that is just and he caught so much shit online for that i don't know if you saw all the oh he had must no. have so much money and da 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 da, da. That truck was super built. Like, I mean, if you if you could do it and you have faith in your rig and faith in your capabilities. Yep. Is this just it. the big maroon truck? <clears throat> the red one with the yeah. silver bumpers? Yeah. It okay, looks like it got like, pretty hairy there a couple times. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. But it's, well, it's just like the guys from Quigley taking an adventure, you know, full-size <laughs> Econo line van. Seriously. You know, the ultimate challenge. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's got to be 8,000. Not that one. No, it was a it was a like new body style, yeah. fourth gen, Ram Dooley, brand new one. I'll send Chris. I'll send you the, the maybe link. maybe a 15, 16. Okay. Hang on, I'm send, I'm going to send it in uh, in the Zoom chat. This is great radio when we talk about the links that get that we're sharing across. Dude, I I Google <laughs> hard, man. All right, it's in the yeah. chat, the Zoom chat. Okay. Um, the but pictures. Yeah, I, you know, so if all the listeners could just go ahead and click on the Zoom chat, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I uh, think I think if people have the capabilities and the you know, and if they do have the money, who cares? Like, take it up there, send it. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. Like, 
It's their money. That's why I look. Yeah. yeah, seriously. Um, you know, I saw so many, uh, you know, comments. Oh, he's got more brain or more money than brains, and yeah. Nope. If, if it were me, you know what I mean. Like, I probably wouldn't do it. That would be I my mean, rig because I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't have that much that, money. With that comment. <laughs> <laughs> same. I mean, same. He got more money than I do because I damn sure wouldn't be driving a dealer through Pritchett. I mean. Could be telling no. something to I mean, drive Pritchett, yeah, yeah, and I'm sure but, the guy that guy has uh, enough vehicles to probably wheel Pritchett all day. You know what I mean? But I, mm-hmm. I still think it was badass that he did it. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, that was a power move. That was that was a mar- like again marketing. Like he's like, I'm going to do this so that people can see what this thing I built can do. Oh yeah, it, I agree. You know it, but God it, damn, does that. If you didn't know what you were looking at, it looks like he's out on King of the Hammers. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. Being a dually flex like that, like, well, oh, it's that's well, uh, we'll, you know two grand and higher. We'll be out of King of the Hammers actually in February, and I'll, oh yeah, nice. there's there's no way in hell you're getting that thing through. No, yeah, King, <laughs> King of the Hammers. <laughs> I mean, shit, we'd like to see him try, right. I mean, I if he if he shows up and let's drive it up those two often, right. people will watch that YouTube video too. Seriously, right? Yeah. Having take that down, Metal Master, or something, and see how <laughs> Chocolate Thunder, and see how well that goes. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. So, all right. So let's uh, let's jump into to you guys and Overland Essentials. So, do uh, you want to give us our your like elevator pitch and you, who you are, how you came to be, and whatnot? Perfect. So, yes. sure. Do you want to go so, first, Brian? Yeah, I'll, I'll chat about it a little bit. Well, so to give some background, like me and Levi, um, I'm retired Army. Levi's actually getting ready to retire from the Army in, I think, May of next year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, me and him have been buddies for 15 years in Army career. We deployed to Iraq together. Um, you know, we've always been into the off-road scene, really, um, you know, from stretch TJs on 40s to LJs on 42 stickies to V8 swaps. We've, we've always been into the off-road scene. And, you know, in 2000 and what was it, Levi, 2016? Well, uh, when we went to Arkansas? Yeah. It was 17. 2017. <laughs> yeah. We took our rock crawlers to Arkansas. and. The overlanding thing was really hadn't taken off in the United States yet too much. It had. I think yeah. it had. I think it was pretty popular back then. I just don't it was think pretty popular. Knew. You just you didn't, didn't have a name a this, for it. You didn't see yeah. you didn't see shops. You didn't see there wasn't a whole lot of businesses, but there was a lot of mm-hmm. people doing it. And we took our rock crawl and rigs to Arkansas and on Most you know miserable. God, it was awful, man. Like, we're both driving with <laughs> earplugs. I mean, we're driving on stickies on the highway. We both had earplugs in because your tires are so... I yep. mean, it was a miserable trip. I about ended up divorced and, <laughs> and in jail. I was, I was this close to killing my kid. Like, you know... Was just, well, Jesus. I tell you how that it looked like, you know, being... Coming from Levi life. just became a robot. Yeah, yeah. Levi. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Mike's we got Levi stuff. Tron. Oh, sorry. Hold on. I'll... I'll uh, I'm, I'm at the house with me. I'll, Brian, you can continue on that. Yeah. <laughs> so Arkansas, Arkansas, Arkansas was your Arkansas favorite trip of all time. And, and we went to Arkansas <laughs> in, in like June or July. It was humid as all. Yeah, I mean, it was just a miserable trip, man. But yes. the thing is, is we, we absolutely loved it, though, at the same time. Like, we really liked the idea of that. You know, one vehicle does it all. You, mm-hmm. you figure out how to make it work and and go explore and when we came back literally within two weeks we had both sold our rock crawlers levi had a dually and a rock crawler and a trailer i think he had a 35 foot fifth wheel i had an lj i had my lj and a crawler and i think i sold everything yeah so within all two like- weeks we sold <laughs> all of our stuff and we both Got went it. out bought bought two new jeeps and we started the overland thing mm. and we took um, in, and it took us a couple years. Um, but in what in 2019, we both took our our overland rigs to to Easter Jeep Safari, and you know when we went down there, we were both still on you know like 
rock crawler suspension, which rock crawler suspension and overland suspensions. Now everybody knows there's a big difference, but back then you didn't really, you didn't really know oh, there yeah. was that big of a difference, you know, like rock crawl suspension. You want a lot of flex doesn't handle a lot of weight. Um, you know, so we didn't really know that. So we spent a lot of time in, in Easter Jeep Safari talking to TerraFlex and a bunch of companies about, you know, we had rooftop tents on and a full build out on the inside with fridges and, and did a bunch of that stuff. And our, our Jeeps didn't handle very well. And we were trying to figure that stuff out. Mm-hmm. And on our way back from Moab, we were on the radio with each other. And that's literally the, the exact moment that we came up with, with the Overland Essentials. Nice. Was to give people, we started it for education purposes, to give somebody to where they could be like, hey, man, like, this is what I'm doing. What, what will work and what won't work? And the thing mm-hmm. is, is we, have, we had spent thousands and thousands of our own hard-earned money trying part after part after part and then keeping a notes, you know, like this does not work once you add, you know, top heavy stuff on it. You know, this doesn't work yep. if you do this, if you add something. So we really wanted to give people an, an, a spot so they could, they could reach out to and be like, hey, bro, like this is what my plan is. What will work and what won't work? And then we could literally go through it and be like, you know, these are all the things that we tried. These are the things that worked great. You know, we're not sponsored by TerraFlex or any of these companies. We were just... We wanted to give somebody a spot that they could, you know, to, to get some knowledge, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's kind of how we that's how we started the Overland Essentials. Yeah, I mean, there there's absolutely no replacement for experience and, you know, actual seat time and and time spent on different tires and suspension and, you yeah. know, behind different engines and transmissions. So, yeah, it's, it's a void, you know, I mean, everybody knows that they've, or everybody's been to a dealer, um, you know, whether service or sales, and they find out that they know more than the person there. You Absolutely. Know? That's so, uh, the you old know, parts and rec meme where it's, it's Ron Swanson yeah. walking through Home Depot or whatever. And he's like, is there anything I can help you with? I know more he's than like, you. Like, I know yes. more than you. Yes. So, yeah. you know, yeah, when no, we it, were talking it, to Terraflex, we were talking to him and we actually had Scott and everybody, you know, like the face of Terraflex, Scott and everybody come out and look at our Jeeps you know, and we talked to them about, they're like, man, I don't, I don't really know what would work and what wouldn't work. We're kind of looking into this, you know, and we, we had, a, I mean, we spent hours talking to these guys about, you know, like, you know, the only coil that you could get back then was AEB's heavy duty coil, but it only came in mm-hmm. a four inch lift. And if you didn't have your Jeep weighted down, it rode like a tank. Like we, mm-hmm. we spent two and a half hours talking. What was his name, Levi? The owner of AEB? I can't remember his name. Oh, I know who you're thinking. Was it Dave? Dave. Um, he I mean, owns. We spent, a- we spent two hours with him chatting about Dave. heavy duty coils and everything. Um, and we we test drove like Dave four of his jeeps with those on yeah. there, and Her- they didn't have Her- any Her- weight in them, and they just rode. I mean, just awful. But once you put weight in it, it was great. Well, we mm-hmm. didn't. We didn't want that. We wanted to. We wanted that in between. You know what I yep. mean? You know, and and it was a work in progress. I mean, it, but the the you know the interesting thing with that is companies are catching up because they're starting to figure out that people want to be able to do off road while overlanding. So mm-hmm. we're yep. it's really starting to mix. The line is really starting to blur. <laughs> yeah, know? and that comes very with the comfort and capability of vehicles. You know, drastically increasing over the last fifteen years. Mm-hmm. You know difference in how comfortable you'd be driving a tj rubicon across the country versus a, a jl rubicon is right you know like it's the difference between you know like a friggin uh a honey jack shot and like a, a and some like moonshine shit right um, well, you know like i started with the two-door jk Re- rubicon yeah, recon yeah. edition and i will never go back to a two-door for an overland rig. Mm-hmm. Still have it. Yep. I mean, well, yeah, I still have it. Oh, you still have it? <laughs> it's my my wife likes it so much she wouldn't let me sell it. So nice. she's like, no, the two doors staying. So the recons are cool. <clears throat> now that now the recon's a whole different thing. Yeah. Yeah. We bought the first recon editions that they ever came out with in 2017. Mm-hmm. Those had let's see if my memory is right. That had 10th anniversary Rubicon bumpers and hood. Yep. Yep. 
Okay. And then it also okay. had reinforced, it had a heavy duty front axle, reinforced mm -hmm. knuckles. Yep. It came with a little bit bigger lift, so you could do 35s directly on it without having to change Ooh. anything if you wanted to. Clutch. Um, I mean, it was the decked out, you know, red stitching mm -hmm. on the seats, the recon edition logo. Right. Um, right, right, had a, right. It was badged. It wasn't numbered, which we I really wish they would have numbered them, but it was badged um, mm -hmm. on the inside as a recon edition. So, I mean, they were nice. I mean, we kept those for a long time. In fact, I like the two-door recon edition so much that i went out and bought a four-door recon i flew to chicago and bought it and drove it back <laughs> because i wanted a four-door recon mm. that i wanted to make my overland rig. Mm. and i mean and i like the goby mine was a goby one and i'm a big fan of the goby color and it's a good color but we've you know we've we both so, kind of branched yeah, out from there how did the how so did the drive back you had this Conversation. We, oh, we got we got double Levi on. I here. got double Levi. I tried yeah, to mute. Sorry, him. hold on. I'm trying to figure out how to. Uh, here we go. I can remove the other one. Eve meeting. How about that? Perfect. I'm back up and go. running now. Nice. I am. I'm here. I'm Functional in here. Yeah. Sorry. I was. Uh, now you're good. Is that really? the JK? Yeah, that's yeah. our that's our first Overland rigs. Man, tense on JK, a two door JK always looks somewhat precarious. <laughs> it's like, oh, it was yeah, sketchy at times. A lot but... going on. That's in Moab. That's on, that's on Arches National, that's in Arches Trail. And it was sketchy at times. Let me tell you what. Mm -hmm. Believe it. So, how did, uh, how did the trip talking to the TerraFlex guys and, uh, and, and driving home talking about your, shared love of this stuff turn into the store and you know the brand well i'll jump into that like being in kansas we had nowhere to go yeah um we you know <laughs> we were in kansas city we we had there wasn't a single store anywhere or anybody that we knew and we weren't really uh impressed with the group chats you know and the and the questions that you may ask on facebook and you know, it's kind of, we go back to Rob Swanson, you know what I mean? I, I know more than you kind of, you, <laughs> and you know, coming from the off-road world, it was hard to listen to people that have been in the the industry or, or been in the, you know, wheeling or whatever for a couple months, you know what I mean? In their stock Tacoma, um, yeah. it was very difficult to, to take that feedback or, or take every, And then what got me was if you ask somebody about tire, like, Hey, looking to upgrade my suspension this is what i'm doing what suspension you know is out there what can i look at everybody's favorite suspension was like what everybody's only ran so mm -hmm. they're like oh go with rubicon express or go with terraflex well what yeah. other suspensions metal, have cloak. You? metal cloak go with metal yeah. cloak best suspension ever well what other suspensions have you ran right to to justify this mm -hmm. so yeah the, the caveats don't always show up on on discussion boards yeah, um, Brian and I talked about it a lot. So we were like, hey, like literally the only the what we started was we were just going to be more marketing than anything, not necessarily um, selling product. We wanted to market our the ability to um, educate. That's mm -hmm. what we wanted to do. We wanted to really educate people and and try to find a, a avenue to for other people like Dan Greck and, you know, Clay Croft and those guys that have actually been doing this for legit, you know, mm -hmm. and making money off of this. Both ex to, guests of the show. <laughs> yeah. Kind of. Like past kind of Not that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Both guests yeah, of and, the show. <laughs> so we were trying to think about a way to market this and to do this in the Kansas city area. It was like impossible. So the best choice was for Brian and I to get a business uh, license and buy, you know, buy into these accounts or get these accounts mm -hmm. that we can start buying product and testing it and trying it and then selling it off. I mean, that I don't mm -hmm. know how many rooftop tents I've had. I don't know how many Brian's had. <laughs> I don't know how many of our close friends yeah. have had because we'll we'll literally be like, all right, dude, you need to sell your tent and buy another one. Like, mm -hmm. like even to our friends, we're like, hey, sell it for what you paid for it because I'm going to sell you this one. You know what I mean? Yeah. At a lower discounted price because. I can't run three tents at a time. I've tried. I've had <laughs> tents on 
tents on Jeeps, tents on, you know, we've had, but we're just product testing. And the, and the thing is, is like, that's kind of how we got started with product testing. And then um, we opened the store because with COVID, we literally went from maybe $20,000 a year or what we were going to do in 2019. We were so unprepared to be a actual business. When we went to the rendezvous in the Ozarks, we showed up <laughs> with whatever we could fit in the back of our Jeeps to camp for a weekend and sell. And we were writing price tags on ripped pieces of cardboard. You know what I mean? We were selling, we were selling shit off our own Jeeps just to <laughs> sell stuff. So, yeah, that's a that's a hell of a good problem to have. I mean, yeah, that's literally what we were doing. That's you know, hysterical. Like, during that transition, when we started, when we started like the you know the education thing, we started getting followers and stuff in the Kansas City area. We started getting linked up. We were already a part of a bunch of local groups and stuff like that. But we, what what really happened is is we had people start coming to us saying, "Hey, man, like, why in the hell don't you guys open a store?" Like. Mm -hmm. I'll come buy it from you because I know that you're not going to sell something at your store that's not a quality product that's not because we had tried so much stuff so we knew what companies no offense to any companies but we kind of knew what companies we wanted to we wanted to stay away from because we've used their products and honestly it just did not yep. last and we knew that there was companies out there that we really wanted to you know, to be a part of and do stuff. And we had so many people, you know, encourage us, especially at that first event at that rendezvous, um, you know, the rendezvous in the Ozarks, and that was in 2019. Um, yeah. That really encouraged us, like, guys, like, open up a store, like, please open up a store. So, mm -hmm. you know, me and Levi rolled it around for a while and we were hesitant about doing that because we didn't want people to think, well, they're just doing that because they want to make money. We didn't really care about, I mean, obviously money makes the world go round, but we were both active duty army. Like we were, we don't get paid a lot, but we get paid enough. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So we weren't doing it for the money and we just didn't want to give that impression that, that that's what we were trying to do. Um, so we were hesitant at first, but I think it was Levi. I mean, I, I kind of stayed hesitant, but Levi was like, you know, bro, let's, let's do it. I mean, let's give it a shot. And, and so we, we did it, and here we are. <laughs> cool. <laughs> that's a good trajectory. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's kind of, a, I mean, that was kind of a long story, but we, I mean, we're so passionate about the education piece um, just because we know where we started and, and you know, where we, we didn't have anywhere to go or, or anybody to talk to. And, and we didn't even we could go to like what was that expedition portal yeah, uh, i spent a lot of time yeah. on expedition portal in the very beginning but again like man there was a, not a whole lot of people out there that were doing what we wanted to do you know what i mean we wanted mm -hmm. overlanders you know locked front and rear on 37s this is, is yep. what we were yep. thinking you know what i mean that we called it overroading is what we did you know what i mean oh, running God. running yeah. you know hell's revenge and pritchett canyon and these things with rooftop tents on our on our jeeps mm -hmm. and then wake up the next morning and do it all over again and that yep. was that was that was, when we went in like oh 2015 i think it was or 16 we were at top of the world in moab in our crawler yeah and, and brian actually proposed to his wife on that day but when we got up there just rolling through you know what i mean like it was nothing like you did it every weekend and i was like oh that's cool and yeah, that's, the that's dream, when right? it, yeah that's kind of when it it hit us because at the time i had what really hit me was at the time i had a 42 foot fifth wheel um with a 16 foot garage in the back i had the lj and then i had the big crawler on 42s um and i had a dodge dually um mega cab dually and it cost me so much money to actually own all that stuff mm -hmm. it was hard for me to enjoy it to um, anything, to go it. In. yeah i mean we can go to yep. kansas rocks or we can go to tuttle <clears throat> creek you know once a year i could take the, everything and the whole family and go to colorado or something but
Well, and, and, and not just that. Ranch, when we went in 2016, tax. when we went in 2016 for five days, it was three thousand dollars per family to stay at the place that we stayed at. Jesus. And that was for five days, and then the gas to get there, and then you had to. We ate out every single night, you know, and we we all bought groceries and cooked at the place in the morning. But when me and Levi went back in 2019, back to Moab for Easter Jeep Safari, we stayed out there for six days. We did the Gateway to Moab Trail, which is absolutely beautiful. I mean, it was, and all it cost us was the food to fill up our fridges and our vehicle and the gas to get there and back. We didn't pay a single dollar to stay anywhere. We didn't eat out a single night. We did it all Mm -hmm. out of our Jeeps. And, And we've been able to do, and this is what we tell people that are just getting started, is that there's a trip right there. Yeah. <laughs> so we tell people that are getting started with this all the time that it can be as cheap or as expensive as you want it to be to get started. You can either buy once, cry once, buy quality gear, pay the money and get it set up. But once you buy it, if you take care of it, it'll last forever. Mm-hmm. But you will be able to afford to do more stuff and see more places by doing this route than what we used to do back in the day. I mean, we've been oh, in yeah. so many places <laughs> and seen so many spots that we just wouldn't have been able to afford to do back then. For for me, it's also and and given I haven't done the long overlanding trips, you know, the way you guys have, but the off roading in the trucks versus, you know, having a truck and trailer combo with a, a you know crawler or dedicated off-road rig on the back is the limiting of the variables, you know, like I'm sure all of us have heard stories about people having blowouts on trailers and they, you know, but yeah. the trip is sacrificed because they, you know, they can't source a trailer tire or, yeah. you know, or something breaks on the tow rig or, you know, like there's just neglected maintenance on the wheeling truck because it's not the primary means of transportation you know and it's just a totally different mentality that you that you bring to it and and it comes with the same territory of like the upkeep and the way yeah. you you know handle a vehicle on the trail yep absolutely well, and there's times you gotta you gotta wheel completely different too you know you gotta change oh, yeah. your mindset of wheeling because whenever we were into the crawling thing like i never wanted to pull cable i would try and try and try <laughs> And then either if there were people waiting on me, I would pull cable or, you know, I'd never, if I thought maybe, okay, it's going to take more than what I'm willing to give right now, Mm -hmm. I'll pull cable. But in the, in the, in the mindset of the overlanding thing is, you know, I got 500 more miles to go. Mm -hmm. Like I'll get to an obstacle, you know, here in Colorado is bad because one day you may be able to make it. And the next day it could be completely different. Like I went and ran hack it with my ranger by myself and it was, I felt great. Nothing, you know, sketchy, didn't pull any cable. Like it was super easy. And then like two weeks ago, after a little bit of snow, there wasn't any snow on the rocks, but the melt, you know what I mean? And it had melted all the sand and gravel down on the mm-hmm. rocks. It was sketchy. Um, Here you and, and so you got to kind of, change your mindset like you can't be like oh i made this two weeks ago i'm gonna give it everything i have to make it now there mm-hmm. you go that was the the not sketchy time <laughs> um so like it's it's i mean that trail isn't that difficult it's not you know but but to know like if i was in an overlanding scenario where i was going to drive it 500 more miles i may have you know not done that um but yeah, it's uh, it's one of those things where you just you just gotta try it, and if if you know if you don't feel comfortable, pull cable right now. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like pull it while it's safe, and then and then figure out you know oh maybe I'll come back at a later date and try that same obstacle when I don't have to go to Utah from here. You know what I mean? Like right. right. Um, when I was wheeling, you know, and I had a trailer in the parking lot, like it's time to make it, you know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. I'm not pulling cable. I'm going to sit here, you know, until I, until I figure out the right line. And, and, uh, you know, Disney's a prime example. You know, I I could go to Disney right now and probably go tootle around Disney, Oklahoma for two days and, and have a blast in my little Ranger. And, you know, 10 years ago, I was, I would have been on a V8 and 42s and 
smoking Doing tires waterfall. all the way up, up the waterfall or, or Viagra, Viagra or whatever it is <laughs> yeah. to, to get up one of those those obstacles. But now it's a completely different mindset. And and what's funny is I find it more relaxing. Like oh it's, yeah, man. And, and there's enjoyable no because, question. And my, and my kids enjoy it 10 times more. Um they because before we would get out. We would do an obstacle like Holy Cross. We would go, you know, through the, you know, this big ledge or whatever. Everybody would get out. And if you've ever had a Jeep on 42s and full cage and and harnesses and race seats, and it's a pain in the ass to get in and out, in and out, in and out. Mm-hmm. So you're jumping out. And then so you don't get back in your car for till everybody's through. And then you get back in, you go maybe 100 feet. You do the next obstacle or whatever, or, or you know, a, a boulder or something, or uh, you know, one of these big obstacles, and then you get out and you spot everybody through, and you do this thing. Well, the kids in the in the meantime are just sitting in the back of a cramped jeep, or they get out and they're just going to walk the trail, and it's not fun for them. Um, my wife kind of started getting she she got married into this deal because <laughs> you know we were hardcore into wheeling when we got married. Um, and that was like the prime time we were building cars. I mean, there was when we first got married and we first actually lived together. Um, I I worked at Full of Parts and she had two jobs. I was working at Full of Parts kind of part time, um, and then part time off roading, um, trying to trying to make it in the off road world, you know. And mm-hmm. that was twenty years ago, and now with the overlanding thing, I. I still have that niche. I still have that want to, to go, you know, run Holy Cross or, or, um, Carnage Canyon or, you know, 21 road or something like that out here. Um, but it's a different type of experience. Yep. Totally. Get sorry, it. I'm, I'm rambling. I know I'm sorry, but <laughs> like I said, we get it. We no, get it. you, you touched on something that like, uh, cause I've got four kids and so hence the suburban, but like that, that's something that literally all the time, um, when the kids know I'm planning something, they're like, can we go? They're like, yeah, it's an overland setup. Like we, we can yeah. go, we'll camp, uh, yeah. which I actually have a ton of questions. So I'm going to swing by the shop. So we can, <laughs> we can, <laughs> I've, I've got a whole, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you guys when we're not recording. Um, okay. So we, and we are kind of getting towards our time limit. Um, is there, I, I was trying to think of questions to ask you guys. And I was like, I'm sure they get hit with all these questions all the time. Like what the only, only thing I could come up with is like, what is the little known piece of equipment that you guys are glad that you carry? To me, it's a refrigerator. Okay. That's, Your, yours is that's refrigerator. The easiest, yeah. That's the easiest thing for me. Um, a refri- I, I'll tell you how bad it is. My son, 17 year old son, we had a somewhat broken Dometic 45 in our garage that is now in his broke ass. Matter of fact, the refrigerator is about as worth as much as this old car. Um, <laughs> is extra. um yeah. but uh, yeah. but it's it's you know, and it's not you could buy a cheap one, you could buy an expensive one, you could buy a small one, you could buy a big one, it doesn't matter. But once you get one, you're gonna be like, oh my god, like. Why haven't I known about this my whole life? Yeah. Because we don't mm. stop um, baseball. I, I literally, you know, my son plays competitive baseball. We fill it up with drinks and waters and stuff. I put it in a wagon, hook up my Jackery or PLB 40 to it. <laughs> nice. And we're chilling at the baseball tournament, you know, with a refrigerator. Mm. And the kids are putting their, you know, little frog togs and all the parents drinks or everything. And then we'll whip out sandwiches and snacks. And we could do that with a with a, a cooler also, but I can't just turn around and throw it back in the back of the Tesla and go. You know what I mean? Or back mm-hmm. in the in the the truck and, and leave it there forever. You know what I mean? But to me, that's what's changed the the game of of camping and not even just road trips in general, regardless. Even if I was staying in a hotel room, I would still have a refrigerator. Fair enough. Yeah. We it's have a good one. our road trip coming up. We don't. It'll be the first one in the last two. I've had Dometics with me in the last two, but I won't have one this time, and I'm really sad about it. So. Oh yeah. Well, 
and I won't, I, I was going to say the same thing, but I won't say the same thing then since he already said it, but I mean, it's hard to be having a fridge in yours. For me, I would say the other piece then it would be the, uh, I think the BioLite. BioLite? Really? You know, we have cooked yeah, so many delicious bio meals right? on a BioLite. So everything's surrounding food for the hidden <laughs> gems. Well, I mean, you, yeah. you die if food you don't eat. I mean, so, you know, yeah. he, but we've cooked, I, we've cooked some delicious meals on a BioLite, man. I mean, it's they're really self-efficient. I mean, you can just grab wood from anywhere and put it in there, turn the fan hmm. on, and it heats prime, itself up. Ever, oh, I've seen, yeah, I know what you're talking about. bark or anything like that. Try not oh, to cook hamburgers in pine wood or, or sticks that you randomly find in the desert. Um, usually comes out tasting like tar, but. Um, <laughs> done propane burning stoves, single burning stoves, the jet boils. I mean, we still have a lot of that stuff in our kit or our kits, do. I should say. Um, but yeah, we always end up turning to the BioLite and grilling steaks and, and hamburgers and stuff like that. And the cool thing is, is you could do it from anywhere. You know, it, it, it's, it's nice. Um, it's not very big. I wish they would make a bigger version. Um, so you could say, cook I've, I've been more. hunting for images since you guys said it and they're so small. Yeah. Well, there's yeah. A, yeah. they make a grill. That's the grill, make a grill section that sets on top of that, and you can okay. put you can put two two good sized steaks up on top of that. Uh, you know, and what I noticed with like the BioLite, really the BioLite's more used whenever it's just me and Levi when we it's just us that go out. You know, when the family goes out, you know, me and my wife, we do everything on the scottle. Um, I, I know I know they're expensive, and a lot of people talk about that all the time. But I'm like, literally, you could cook every meal on one thing i mean i got rid of four pots and two pans mm -hmm. which saves a lot of room by switching to a scuttle yeah. so you know we love cooking meals on that and you know levi does you know he has his gsi pinnacle pro stove yep that's exactly it right there you know he has this pinnacle pro stove and uh i think you have a blackstone don't you levi yeah i have a 17 inch blackstone Okay. So when we do when we do the family trips, we cook more on those things. But when it's just me and Levi, you know, the bio light's perfect for just a couple dudes, throw a couple steaks on. Yeah, I mean, so we went out not long ago, and I think I only took a jet boil and a bio light. That was it. Um, I didn't take any other cooking apparatus at all. And huh. every every meal, every everything was done on either one of those two things. And it was fine. And it, you know, when you think about it. They don't take up much room at all. Um, no, I had, jet boils are tiny. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I don't mean, go anywhere without a jet boil because I got to have my coffee, man. Man, See, you should call it. Right yep. <laughs> you should say jet boil. I, I can go without a jet boil, but <laughs> yeah, I think everything revolves around food because, you know, our shelters aren't that one little thing, um, whether rooftop tent or a, you know, gazelle or something like that. It's not a one little thing. You have to have a shelter or you have to have a way of staying out of the wind and the elements and things like that, whether it be a lean to a hammock, whatever you got to have that. Um, there are things that, that make the experience more comfortable for everybody and it makes it a better experience. And I think that's why we chose these things. I mean, they make it a, just a better experience. My, my you know, the refrigerator and the, the bio light, you know, you, you could haul steaks around for a week. Um, and you know marinating chicken or something in your refrigerator for a week and it's not mm. all soggy it's not nothing you stick it on a bio light you grow it and it's just that dinner you know what i mean we're like holy cow i can't believe i made this in the yeah, middle of hot. arkansas it's you know hot. what i mean you know, yeah. we, we tell people you know I have, I have people come into the shop all the time that are talking about products and kind of you know everybody i tell everybody the first thing you need to do is figure out your budget like that's the first thing that you need to do um or you'll get, or you'll get way ahead of yourself, and you'll get overwhelmed by what, what should I get, what should I not get. The black hole will suck you in. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, if you don't set a budget, you can spend ten grand like that. You know, if you set a budget and prioritize, I was telling mm -hmm. food, water, and where you're going to sleep. Like those are the three main things, and you can do that for a very budget friendly setup if you want to. I mean, you, like you can do a gazelle tent and a fridge and. And, and a, and a, a cooler. Flatware, I mean, you know what I mean. And call yeah. it a day, but just do it. Just do a some kind of cooler to keep your. Food. I mean, you don't even absolutely need cold food. You could literally do a, you know, 
a stove and boil water and pour them in, in Mount House meals and have a decent yeah. tent or mm-hmm. sleep yeah. in the back of your truck. Yep. But the thing is, is spend what you can spend and still be able to enjoy it. Um, yes. Because yep. I think you could, you could literally spend $8,000 or me. I spent a lot of money on my camper. Um, and, you know, I spend a lot of time in the, you want know, these vendor shows or back and forth to Kansas. Or I spend a lot of time to, to, justify me buying an value cap but if mm-hmm. you're a if you're a guy that goes out three or four times a year you know don't spend your money on that spend it on an experience like if you can buy if you could get a hotel room for every night you go out and, and explore for a year you know what i mean on the budget that that you're going to spend on a tent and you may only do it for a year save your money and buy hotel rooms or or mm-hmm. rent a trailer or, or rent yeah, equipment yeah. Um, but if you're going to say, hey, look, I've in the past six months, I've gone out 10 times. I've slept in my 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 you know ground tent a total of 30 times, um, you know, three nights per weekend, 10 weekends a year. Um, you can start to justify spending a grand on a good tent. Or, well, I, tell, or two I tell customers that all the time Believe when it comes to fridges, you know, I mean, for two people to eat breakfast and dinner, it's 100 bucks a day on average. So for every breakfast and dinner you eat out of that fridge, that's a hundred dollars a day back in your pocket. A thousand dollar fridge is ten days of doing that. Every meal after that, that every mm-hmm. meal after that's money saved for your next trip. I mean, you yeah. know, if you do it right. But I also tell you know, me and Levi, twenty years in the army, man, we've roughed it in the field before. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> we lived for a year right outside of Baghdad. We've both been all over the the world. I mean, Levi's been to Egypt, all sorts of places. Mm. And we've rusted out in the field, man. So whenever I go to do overlanding, I'm not going to rust it. I, I don't, I, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I want to be, yeah. I want to be comfortable. I don't want to be like, damn, I'm really ready to go home because I've been miserable for the last seven days. I want to be like, I'm, I'm really comfortable out here and I wish I didn't have to go home. Right. You know? So that's how yep. we, yep. we set up our, that's our personal once preference get, on how we. Once we you get to that out. level and you is squared away and organized and i think organization has a lot to do with it um if you're unorganized and you're and all your stuff is big and heavy and you know you're just not enjoying the time out there so right like with the kids and the wife and i don't want to go out there to work you know what i mean i don't want to go out there Mm -hmm. to to be wore out by the end of the day and and i think there's my current setup um i think that's part of the thing like that we've we developed now because when we first started man i tell you i I would be wore out by the time i got camp set up and then i would go to sleep and the next morning <laughs> i'd be pissed that i had to take it all back down um yep. Dude, I, and repeat. have you I been think, eavesdropping on conversations with my wife help him out <laughs> right yeah I, and, and you know and, and it's to the point where like man we gotta we gotta figure out something different you know what i mean what's faster what's easier what's less work yeah, um, because I go out there to relax. I go out there and let my kids have a good time, and I would much rather be, you know, baiting a hook for my daughter's fishing pole than fighting a an eighty seven inch rooftop tent. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. um, and you that's have been in my search history. Like, <laughs> careful, careful. So, <laughs> give me, give me yeah, a call. And, and yeah. like, I've, we'll talk. I've got. I've, and it's taken years. I, this is not an instant gratification situation. It's taken mm-hmm. years. Um, and I've, and I say this because I could load up, I could, I could load up right now, a bag in the back of my truck. It's already set up. It's ready to go. It's not work. I can go out for probably a month in the current situation I'm in right now. Like we can get off the phone or get off the computer. I could pack a bag in 30 minutes, be on the road for a month. And that's how I've always wanted my organization to be. Um, fantastic. Yeah, that's that's and, fun. And that's it's spectacular. Because you never really know. And once, you get, and once you get sporadic and where you're like, hey, let's go do this this weekend. You know what I mean? It'll be Thursday. Be like, hey, you got to work tomorrow. You got to work on Saturday. Kids are off on Friday. Let's go to the mountains. You know what I mean? Or let's go to mm-hmm. a desert or let's go to Arkansas or let's go to wherever you want to go. Um. And it's sporadic and fun and it's not a pain in the ass every time. It's it's awesome because I've I've been there with the crawler and it would I would work on the crawler for a week. I would go wheeling for two days. I would, 
you know, have to work on the fifth wheel and everything else too. And then I would drag it all back and I would have to work on the crawler again for a week mm-hmm. for everything that I broke or, or, you know, wanted to do different and have to, you know, get everything ready to stow the, the fifth wheel. And it just, it was like a two week process to go wheeling for three days. Yep. Now, like I said, I still get that itch. You know what I mean? I still want to go wheeling and hardcore wheeling. Um, but whenever I'm sitting out and, you know, my favorite campsite in the whole world is off a road called Half Moon Road or Half Half Moon Basin uh, here in Colorado outside of Leadville. It's and I could sit there for a month, 14 days is what the Forest Service will actually allow me to sit there. But um, I could sit there for 14 days and and. Never have a stress in the world, like super stress free. I don't typically like a whole lot of people in the public so i don't get a whole lot of that that (laughs) interaction with people i don't like and usually people that are up there exploring are my type of people anyway so i could have a conversation with them i can you know what i mean i can i can hang out yeah and that's and that's they're like-minded individuals out there and that's that's what i want to be surrounded by and if it's not work and i'm not getting stressed out about having to go to Moab for a week, you know what I mean? And, and two, I'm leaving in two days for Moab. How many times have you heard that people? Ah, I can't do that. I'm leaving in two days for Moab. Like I got so much crap I got to get done. Um, <laughs> or I got to completely rebuild Brian's yeah. front of axle. Um, what? So <laughs> no, never. Right. <laughs> so, so yeah, I mean, it's just the ease now. And, and Brian's in the same boat. Like when his JK was set up, that's really what got me to, where I'm at today is watching Brian pull into a camp spot, pop out the Ursa Minor, and in two seconds, you know, he was sitting in a chair drinking a you know a beer or whatever, watching me uh, battle my setup. You know what I mean? So I was like, okay, yep. when, it, when it comes time, it's it's time to change everything up, and that's why where I'm at today. And yeah, Brian will be in that store. Same yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> literally, if if I could tell you how many times, like we messed up, you know what I mean? Like it just wasn't the right decision. Um, there has been a lot of times and, it, and it's not just us. We would, we would kind of push our buddies to try some things. You know what I mean? Like, Hey guys do the, I'll sell you this at cost. Like it's not, you know what I mean? Like it's going <laughs> to yeah. cost you 30% less. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just give it a shot. And if it doesn't work out, sell it and we'll get something different. Nice. I don't know how many times we've tried that. You know what I mean? Just because we don't have the right vehicles or the bought a forerunner back in 2018 or 19 or 19. I bought a forerunner just because I really wasn't familiar with fifth gen forerunners that much. And we needed uh, to get one and, and figure it out. So I bought my wife a brand new forerunner. And in like a week, it was lifted and racks and nice, you know, all this stuff. And as you do. Yeah. And, and, you know, trying, trying different things. And then, uh, that's kind of why I'm in the Ranger. Now I want, I just want to try something different and Brian's in a Bronco. You know what I mean? We, you you don't, you you typically see a lot of Broncos now on the road, but a year ago when he ordered it, (laughs) it was, uh, it wasn't super, um, you know, uh, you know, normal or whatever to see Hmm. an overland educated Bronco or. Yep. It's Uh, just one of those things. Um, Sweet, we are getting late, and Ross is about yeah, to start on the east. That's coast. That's okay. Yeah, I'm on East Coast time. <laughs> I, I hate to cut this off, but I, I'm, I have a, a newborn that I'm. Yeah, yeah, still I trying get to, to ramble. Sleep with. I'm so passionate, and, <laughs> homie. Uh, you're there's no judgment on our end. We're, <laughs> that's, it just means we'll have to do it again. We've done 138 <laughs> episodes of literally just talking about this stuff, so we're yep. we'll definitely yep. do it again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we enjoy I know, bro. It. It's, it's a passion, man. So we can, yeah. it's hard to not keep going sometimes. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. And we'll be in, yep. we'll be in some huge shows. So if your listeners are out there, we'll be at King of the Hammers. We'll be at uh, Pomona cool. Expo. We'll be at California all the- Overland Adventure Show. We'll be at the Moore Expo. We'll be at Overland uh, Adventure X in Utah. Um, yeah, we've nice. got around 11 or 12 shows this year. So if, yeah, we'll, we'll, we're going to be somewhere in the in the area. So if you guys see our bright yellow flags, um, you come know, come by and see us. Come by cool. and see us. Yeah, cool. Sounds good. Sweet. Well, typically at this point in the show, I ask if there's something you want to plug, but I 
feel like we've done that. Let's Check that box. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Um, You're good. No, that's so good. You know how to uh, how to how to go through it. That's uh, that's what you're supposed to do. Exactly. So when I when I wrap up the show, I just say you can rate and review the show uh, wherever you listen to your podcasts. We're we're just about everywhere. Uh, you can like and subscribe on YouTube. Uh, for Overland Essentials, you guys are at the Overland Essentials. That's correct. Yes. Yep. Anywhere else? Um, we're on Instagram, Facebook, and we will have our website up here soon as soon as our web guy finishes the layout. All right. Well, when he finally finishes the layout, you let me look at it too, please. We'll do. Uh, yes. I'm, I cool. might spend my day working in digital marketing, optimizing things for search engines. So, uh, well, we should uh, talk. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely <laughs> talk. Mike. <laughs> Mike. Because me and Levi, me and Levi drive that shit ourselves. And I'm going to be honest with you, we're not digital marketing experts, <laughs> nor website experts, nor anything electronics wise. Uh, yeah. My uh, quick anecdote, Ross, I know it's late. Yes. I literally had a guy the other day, uh, I asked them about some stuff and they were like, no, 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 they assured us it was totally fine. And then like I did an audit of the site and it was not fine. It was actually atrocious. Nice. Bad. So yeah. they had paid someone to do that. I did the audit for free. So dude, my um, wife has to set up my iPad for me, man. Like that's how bad I am. We could definitely talk. Uh, so they're mm. the Overland Essentials. You can follow yep. Hooniverse, the Hooniverse on Twitter, the Real Hooniverse on Instagram. Ross is no, not like the one from Friends on Instagram. I'm at Overlanding Dad. And that's it. We did a show. Thank you so much, guys. Cool. Guys, thanks, guys. thanks for having us. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you all. Is my, I'm, I'm guessing my video is still not working. <laughs> it's still not it working. It is yeah. not working. <laughs> all right. <laughs>